Some of you already probably know who I am, but for those who don't, I'm uh, Ron's little brother. Actually, in fact, those who do already know me probably still call me Ron's little brother. <laughs> uh, I've spent a lifetime actually being called Ron's little, little brother, and you know, I've been waiting for this for a long, long time, so here it goes. Hi everyone, my name is Ken. <laughs> you know, I've probably, be, I've probably known Ron for, I don't know, all my life. So, um, throughout that, that time, I've gotten to know a lot of Ron's secrets. <laughs> Since the role of the best man is to reveal the groom's most embarrassing secrets, I never expected Ronald Albert to ask me to be his best man. Well, actually, probably the best man he could get in short notice. <laughs> actually, in fact, Ron seems to have a really hard time finding or choosing his best man. First, he called his most charming friend. He said no. <laughs> Second, he called his most smart, smartest friend. And he said no. <laughs> Then he asked his most good-looking friend, and he said no. Then he texted me, and I said, you know what, Ron? I can't say no to you four times. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, just kidding. I was super excited to get to tap off the bench um, for Ron here. I've got a pretty traditional speech here, and the first thing that's traditional for the best man to do in a speech is to let everybody from the bride's side know what kind of man Norma decided to marry. So here it goes. Ron is caring, loving, funny, charming, generous, successful. Uh, Ron, uh, what's this say? I'm really having a hard time reading it right here. <laughs> all right, all right, enough of that. Um, let's get to the good stuff. The next tradition in a best man speech is to talk about our past together. So, um, with every or many brother to brother relationships, I had to struggle with my me both wanting to be just like Ron and wanting to be my own person. I think my time during high school is the best example of this conflict. All throughout that time, Ron, everyone knew. Um, Everyone knew Ron through his sporting accomplishments. To show this, I put together an extensive video of Ron's football career at Lewis and Clark High School in Spokane, Washington to show. And I'd like to show this right now. <laughs> the major reason I decided to be, uh, you know, play football. I wasn't as athletically uh, talented as him, so it was a stretch for me, for sure. I mean, look, this is what I had to compete against. Here's Ron, you know, playing football, baseball, and I don't know if you can see this really inspirational quote in his, uh, it says, to achieve a goal is to make a goal, and with a, without a goal, you end up lost. <laughs> you can't beat that. Sometimes I simply idolize my brother, and I actually still do. Um, I still do with his recent sacrifices in the form of multiple tours in the Middle East, and his current bodybuilding fanaticism. <laughs> Kenny, 
or Kenneth, as my mom would call me, <laughs> and not Ron's little brother. That's why I liked fighter jets when Ron liked tanks. That's why I liked the Bears when he liked the Redskins. And that's why I liked Notre Dame yeah. when he liked Florida State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I decided to go to Ferris High School instead of Lewis and Clark. <laughs> but even then, people at Ferris knew who Ron was. Regard regardless, it was funny because whether I tried to be just like him or the exact opposite of him, it made me who I am today. And I really do thank him for that. He was basically a father figure to me. We didn't talk much, as probably a lot of you know, but I still admired him and took to heart whatever he, he told me whenever we did speak. There is this distinct time I remember <laughs> when I started playing football in junior high and I wanted to impress Ron. Uh, impress Ron after one game and I told him how one of the coaches showed, up, showed me how to do a high-low. And to explain what that is, it's, it's basically where when you're tackling an opposing player your teammate goes and hits him above the waist while you go and hit him below the waist. And I was totally excited that I learned how to do this. I was so excited and I told, I thought Ron would be so proud, but the exact opposite happened. Ron reminded me that this is actually a dirty play and someone could actually get hurt from it. That stuck with me. In essence, that taught me that and that taught me to do the right thing and not necessarily what people tell you to do. There's also this one other time where Ron literally saved me and uh, saved my life indirectly. My friend Tony and I were walking down the street and a group of guys were walking the other way and said something derogatory about us in passing. So me, being the stupid one, decided to yell back a very, very bad word. As soon as those words left my mouth, I knew we were in trouble. The group of guys quickly turned back and started following us closely, taunting us to fight. I finally turned around because I knew we couldn't outrun them all. I, ex I was expecting the first true beating in my life. But as one of them, one of them was about to make a move, another of them asked me, aren't you Ron's little brother? <laughs> and of course, that's when I said, yes! <laughs> and, the, and the guy quickly de-escalated the situation and told the group to leave us alone. And, and that was it. They walked off and I checked if I peed in my pants. <laughs> that was one of the first times that reaffirmed it was good to be Ron's little brother. It is definitely impossible to summarize the last 41 years I have known Ron, but all I can say is that I'm really proud to be Ron's little brother. I know that Ron will maintain his usually high standards as a fantastic, loving husband. I don't know Norma very well yet, but from what Ron's told me and what I've seen here today, you are super creative, have a motherly love for all the people you know, and you're very supportive. Everyone will agree here that you make a fantastic couple, and it is a privilege for me to be a part of this celebration for your clear love towards each other. All right, so the final tradition. I've prepared a few parting words that I'd like to conclude, and then I'd like to conclude by raising our glasses to toast a happy couple.
Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Just a few hours ago, family and friends joined from around the world. And you join what is the most wonderful wedding in the history of marriage. <laughs> that word should have new meaning for all of us tonight. It can be consumed by petty differences. It will be united in common interests. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 7th of November, and that we are gathered here on the same day as the birthdays of scientist Madame Curie, General David Petraeus, and wrestler King Kong Bundy. <laughs> you are fighting for your right to be together, to exist together. And after this day, the 7th of November, will no longer be known as two days after Ken's birthday. <laughs> but as today, Norman and Ron declared in one voice, our love will not go quietly into the night. Our love will survive even with a fight. We're going to live on as one. We're gonna survive as one. Today, we celebrate Norman and Ron's wedding day. <laughs> to the new Mr. and Mrs. Farrell. <laughs> that was